Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Make Code Arcade Advanced Stream. I am Richard. Hi, Richard on the Make Code Forum. I'm Lucas, the intern. Um, and we're working on our Pokemon style game today. Um, and Lucas, if you had to guess, what have I drawn here? It looks like uh, there is a frog who is very scared and had a ghost come out of the mouth. Thank you. Yes, it is a possessed frog. Um, oh, well. So we need to have a lot of monsters for our thing, and we decided it was going to be ghost themed. Um, and so I was just drawing one um, to start off. And so now we have a possessed frog ghost, I guess. Um, all right. So um, what are we making? We're making a Pokemon type game, so a monster collector. But instead of Pokemon, we're doing ghosts. And um, what we've done so far is we have a game where you can walk around and get into battles. Right now, it's set up to just always start in a battle. And um, we have monsters that you can level up. So we have this, um, this is what we worked on last time. We have some level up code that, you know, you can basically design a monster with stats, things that it's good at, things that it's bad at, and then we can um, level it up some number of times. Hi Gideon, hi, hi, hi Kiwi Phoenix. Um, so um, let's go ahead and create our, uh, Ghost. So um, I created one ghost, which is a possessed frog. Let's make another one now. I'm going to get rid of this terrible thing. Um, and we're going to draw something to replace it. Um, Lucas, what's a, what's a type of ghost? Oh, uh, let's see. Ghastly, Haunter, Gengar. Uh, okay. No, no, oh, it's... not doing actual Pokemon. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I guess, oh, uh, gosh. Um, oh, man, I'm, I don't know. I think Casper the ghost, but maybe that, the, I don't know. What are they? I, yeah, Casper. Um, I think really you're sure. a friendly type ghost. I think that, yeah. that works. Um, so let's start by doing ghost eyes, which are always fun. Um, and we're going to give it a creepy smile. There we go. Um, and let's just draw a big old blob that we can start with. So to go ahead and do that a horrifying thing. Um, and we're going to, let's see. So friendly ghost, mm, what makes it look friendly? I think it's a good question to ask. I mean, the smile is one thing. You know what, I'm gonna start over. Um, let's see, when I say friendly, what do you think of? Well, maybe if there's like a speech bubble and the person's like, how can I help you? Or so happy to see you, I don't know. That is way too much text to write, but I like where your head's at. <laughs> um, hmm. What about those? What about those guys who stand out in front of um, uh, car dealerships? Hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yep. Uh, are the, not the ones that spin signs, but people that. No, the tubes. The tubes. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. The, the ones that are like blown up with air, you know? Yeah. Hmm. Oh yeah, those things. Uh, those like red waving ones. Those are fun. Yeah, they're kind of like ghosts and they're definitely friendly. Yeah, yep. All right, we're just gonna mock that, out the shape for now. That surprisingly looks... Uh, way better than uh i feel like it's not easy to make it actually look like it but it it, it does look like it thank you um yeah okay so we're gonna give them um a face and you know a smile is gonna be kind of tough but eh, that's okay whatever <laughs> this is pretty rough but we're just going to do, I don't want to spend the entire time doing uh, art. So I'm just going to make this guy as uh, quickly as possible. Um, going to give him those little streamers they kind of have at the end. And let's see, um, Luke says, hi, what game are you guys working on? Um, so yeah, we're working on our uh, monster collecting Sucremon sequel. So Sucremon was the first monster collecting game we made. This one though is going to be about ghosts, and ugh, I really don't like this anymore. Um, 
else. It's bad. I don't like it. Yeah, whatever. We're going with it because I'm not going to spend the entire time doing art. Um, and so we're uh, uh, making some some art for our um, ghost game. But right now we have this um, RPG uh, that we um, can do battles and have monsters that have stats. So um, let's go ahead and get rid of that. And now we have um, this guy over here on the left. Ugh, am I going to leave this? Mm. It, it looks not as bad when it's smaller. So <laughs> it's true. It still looks pretty bad, though, I got to say. <laughs> All right, no, we got, we can't do this. I can't, I can't look at this guy all stream. Um, okay, 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 okay. All right, we're gonna do a purple ghost, hmm. and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna draw a ghost shape, and then we'll do something with it. So, what, what's that one? Um, there's a few like Danny Phantom. I know there's Danny Phantom and. Fairly, uh, fairly out parents. Those are fairies, not ghosts. Never mind. The trick to drawing a ghost is getting a good swoosh shape. Hmm. Um, also, I'm going to flip this guy because my other one was facing this direction. Hmm. Um, and we'll make these purple instead. And um, let's give him an arm. Because he's excited. Yeah, whatever. I don't hate this one as much. Um, yeah. that, looks, that looks pretty decent. Yep. Uh, so I'll uh, let me fix the eyes real quick, but then we'll be we'll be good to go. So I think I'm just going to I like this eye better than the other eye, so I'm just gonna copy this. Hmm. Go over here and there we go. Nice. Um, okay, so we're going to call this guy friendly. Um, and let's go to work. We're creating our other ghost now. Um, so the one we're fighting against. So we have like a start encounter function, I think. Or let's see, is it start battle? Yeah, here it is. Um, and we're going to go over to my assets and choose the other ghost I drew, which is the possessed frog. Cool. Okay, so we have a friendly ghost versus a possessed frog. Um, so uh, we've got our stats now, which um, so these are just going to be some randomly assigned numbers. Uh, they um, like determine basically what our ghost is good at. So we define these as percentages, um, and that has to do with how our level up goes. But the idea is um, that if it was, let's see. Um, uh, if the percentage is higher, it's going to be better at that stat. So um, 100 will make it pretty good at that stat. 50 will make it less good. Lower than that will make it even less good. You know. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, Bro Skittle says, "Give it eyes that are sideways parentheses." Ooh, I do want to. I do want to draw a ghost like that. So we'll do that at some point. Um, and then uh, uh, Lucas is drawing a ghost for me. Oh, they've got one. Let me take this over one sec. Sorry, I have Twitch chat on a different computer than I am um, coding on, so I need to send this link to myself. Do -do 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 -do. Oh, nice. I like it. Cool. And you got the size right. So we're doing 32 by 32 for our um, ghosts. So um, this is perfect. Let's go ahead over to here. And we're going to um, just, for now, we're just going to put in a 50% chance. 
Um, but we will later, I think, make a function that's going to actually define our. Uh, oh, whoops, don't want to do that there. I want this 50%. Going to duplicate this, put this right here. This out. Crush it. Yeah. So I don't know if it's um, two two mics on uh, one for the Twitch and and one for the uh, the teams, but I definitely hear um, uh, like. Are a, you are you getting an echo? Do you have Twitch? Yeah. Open? Yep. Uh, nope. Nope. Really? That's never happened before. Um, Twitch, tell me if you have a. Uh, um, if you hear an echo from me or not. Uh, let's see, I need to drag out a new image for this so that I don't copy and paste over them. Okay, they say no echo, so I think it's on your side, Lucas. Oh, Are you sure you don't have Twitch open in a tab somewhere? Because that's usually what causes that. Yeah. Oh, uh, here, I'll... Okay, I think it stops. All right. Dang. My bad, yeah. No problem. Um, yeah, okay, crying ghost. Cool, got that in there. If anyone else has, if anyone else has um, a, a ghost that they want to make, please go ahead and um, put them in. It'll be uh, 32 by 32 for um, the, the size that we want. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and start doing the battle logic. So we have these stats. We have um, level, the health, the attack, defense, and speed. And speed's pretty self-explanatory, but how are we going to calculate how much damage an attack does? Well, um, so let's talk a little bit about how Pokemon does it. Um, I probably should have looked this up beforehand to get the actual equations, but I know the basics. Um, so whenever a Pokemon is using an attack, the attack has what's called a power. You can usually find this from the status info of your Pokemon games. I think it's kind of hard to find in the first game, but for the rest of them, it's pretty easy. So if you look at the power, it's a number between zero and like 150, I think is the strongest one. No, sorry. The strongest one is explosion, obviously, which I think is 250. Um, but that also like destroys your Pokemon. So, um, so um, that power number is then combined with either the attack or special attack, depending on what type it is. But we only have an attack, so we're only using that. And then um, it goes up against the uh, enemy's defense or special defense. And an equation happens that basically subtracts based off the defense how much damage is done. And then there's some randomness added. So in Pokemon, there's always a random range with how much damage you can do. Um, and uh, these are all set numbers, and they're also pretty well understood because people care a lot about Pokemon, and so they calculate all of these things. They have all of these things out in like you know blog posts and things you can read. So. We're going to just kind of mess around and try to come up with our own equation. And so to start, let's go ahead and create a um, function for calculating this. So we're going to make a function, a function that's going to be called calculate damage. It's going to take in some numbers. So the first number is going to be attack. Well, let's call it um, move power so that we don't confuse ourselves. Next one is going to be um, attack. And then the next one is going to be defense. Um, and we will probably do another thing later, which is um, I want to do types. So you know, one of the things about Pokemon is you have a bunch of different types, right? So before Lucas was um, listing out ghost type Pokemon from the original game, which in the original game, they're all ghost slash poison, which is weird. There's no pure ghost type in the original one. Um, but uh, you can uh, have moves that are good against some types and bad against other types. That's why Pokemon is often referred to as a rock, paper, scissors type RPG, because you, have, you know rock beats uh, scissors, scissors beats paper, paper beats rock. And it's the same kind of way in Pokemon. You know, this type is good against this type is good against this type. Um, so we probably want to do something like that, where we have like a not very effective, a regular effective, and a super effective. But for now, let's just get our basic damage calculation, um, just our regular effective and um, do it based off of that. So um, let's see. So the simplest way to do this would be to do something like return. We want to do like the attack minus defense. So the simplest thing I can think of is just move power plus attack minus defense, right? So this would be like 
if we have um, a move power of 10 and attack of zero and your defense is 20, we would do no damage to you. So that's obviously not good. So we're also going to take this and clamp it a bit. So we're going to do a max. Put this in here and we're going to do a max be uh, between this and one. So if this goes negative, you're always going to do at least one damage because just like in Pokemon, you always do at least one damage. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm guessing that this is probably a pretty bad equation, but this is what we're going to use for now. Um, let's hook this up and so that we can actually get some things like that we're, we're trying to do. Um, so let's go ahead first and make sure that we have some good opponents. Um, right now we are uh, setting up our monster over here. So we have um, friendly, we're setting, is this their level is 100? Uh, yeah, we're setting their level to be 100 right now, which is probably not great. Let's do 10 so that we're dealing with slightly saner numbers. Um, and then we just put in some kind of random values for um, our uh, different uh, stats. So it looks like we have a 50 for, I should, I remember there was some way I was remembering this. Hads, H-A-D-S, Hads. That's how I remember the order of these arguments. OK, so their health is low. Their attack is high, their defense is low, and their speed is high. That looks good. So let's now go over to our um, where we're creating our enemy monster, and we're going to put in something similar. So we're going to put them as the same level. Um, and let's go ahead and uh, you know what? We're just going to make them the same. Why not? We'll see what they look like. You know, going against uh, the same uh, type. Um, so we're going to do 50, 100. Uh, 50, 100, I think it was. It doesn't matter. As long as we get some realistic number in here, we can start, you know, doing this. Um, and let's go ahead and hook up our um, fight command now so that we can start doing damage. So we're going to go over to our, let's see, our battle code, which is do player turn. This is what we want. Um, and we're going to, inside of this fight, um, we're going to go ahead and damage our other um, uh, enemy. So I'm going to call our function that we just made. So calculate damage. Um, and we're just going to make up a move damage power right now. So I'm, I don't know. I'm just going to put this in as, as 10. That would be really weak in terms of Pokemon, but um, for us, it, we're just doing our own thing. And we want to put in now our attack right here and our defense right here. So we're going to get the attack of our companion. So we're going to get that from sprite data. Right here, number. That in there. This companion. We want to get our attack. And we want to get our defense of our opponent. So I'm going to change this to be opponent. And we're going to go ahead and make this defense. And um, now that we have this, we're just going to change our status bar um, for our enemy by this amount. Um, so we're going to go into in, here and get the status bar of kind health attached to our um, opponent. So let's do that. So status bar of kind health attached to opponent, change value by call calculate damage. We want to make this negative, I'm realizing now. So we're going to do zero minus this. There we go. Um, so let's do that. And then we're just going to start the player turn again because we're just kind of testing. All right, so let's do this and see what happens. Uh, fight. Whoa, OK, we KO'd them. All right, let's, let's try that again. <laughs> fight. Oh, we KO'd them again. Fight. Oh, we KO'd them again. Fight. We KO'd them again. OK, all right, um, this is maybe not the best. Let's, uh, let's print out some numbers so that we know what's happening. <laughs> All right. Oh, we have two more ghosts coming in in the chat. Let me grab those before I forget. Um, so this first one's going to be coming from Bro Skibble. Let me go ahead and grab them. By the way, if you have a name for your ghost, please do put it in the chat. Um, there we go. I need to put both these in our meeting chat so I can get it on my computer. Um, 
All right, so this first one's from Bro Skibble. And we have. Ooh, not opening. There we go. Oh, cool. It's a pumpkin ghost. Oh, I love the eyes on this one. They're like gooey. That's great. Oh. Very nice. Yep. Okay. So we're going to go ahead in here and. Oop. Come on up, Otto. Hey, everybody. Otto's here. The rare auto cameo. Uh, okay. Otto, you be good. He's sitting on my lap right now, and if he's not good, I'm going to kick him off. So. Okay, so this guy is named Pumpkit Boo. Thank you, Bro Skibble. Um, and let's go ahead and open up Kiwi Phoenixes now. Oh, this one's like a cube. I like it. A very angry cube. And let's see, Kiwi Phoenix. Um, they say theirs is inspired to buy the Red Ghost from Luigi's Mansion. Um, and cool. OK, I'm just going to call it Red Ghost, because um, that is. We can, uh, you know, workshop this later. All right, I'm going to make this 100% the possessed frog for now so that I can clean up this code in a bit. We need to make a code to like actually give us an opponent and give all these guys different stats. So um, for now, it's good. And for some reason, my simulator died. But all right, there we go. Um, all right, so uh, back where we were, we're one hit KOing uh, this enemy every time we fight them. So we need to start printing out some numbers so that we have an idea of like why this is going so badly. Um, so one way to do that um, is to just do a console log. So I'm going to do a console log of a bunch of different values. And then we can figure out what it is um, that's going wrong. So we're going to put in our attack. We're going to put in our defense. Um, and we're going to put in the thing we calculated. So let's go ahead and make this uh, power, attack, defense and um, value. And we're going to go ahead and run this. And now when I run this, um, we're going to see the console pop up right here. If I open that up, we can see our numbers printed out and we can kind of calculate what it is we're getting. So we have power of 10, an attack of 28, defense of five. I'm beginning to see why this isn't working well and a value of 33. Uh, OK, Let's do this again. 10, 22, 3, 29. Oh, OK, Maybe we need to give, give this guy more defense. 10, 28, 10, 28. OK, well, that's better at least, I guess. These guys are way better at attack than they are at defense. Um, OK, yeah, that's, that's a lot. Uh, let's also print out the health so that we know how much we're overkilling them by. So let's go to where we're doing our fight. Do, 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 do. We have a legendary ghost attacking a non-legendary ghost. Yeah, well, I think they, they have the same stats, but um, the, they're just really good at attack, really bad at defense. They're, they're a glass cannon ghost, as is often <laughs> said. Um, OK, let's, let's put this in right here. We're going to grab the um health of our uh ooh, so let's actually put this up here we're going to put health and we're going to grab this status bar that we have and go ahead and get the value so i'm just going to put in this value block right here this right here and this should go here there we go okay cool all right so let's go ahead and take a look again their health is eight the power is 10 we're doing 34 damage that's not good. OK, hmm. so hmm, what is we definitely need to come up with a new equation for this. Um, hey, Otto, yes, you're being a very good cat. 
Otto, by the way, is the protagonist of this game. We haven't showed him, but he is the, the main character. Um, let's see. Uh, Lucas has named the Red Ghost Box Bob, and QE Phoenix seems to approve. So we're going to go ahead and change this right now to be Box Bob. All right. So um, let's figure out a new way to calculate this damage. And I don't have any ideas off the top of my head. Do you have anything, Lucas? Um, I think part of me is like, can we just give them a bunch more health uh, up up to the stats that are the ones that are not as not as great? I don't know if that would solve the issue or. I mean, it, it would certainly would. It's maybe not yeah. the most elegant way to do it, but you know what? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm okay with that. So let's go yeah. ahead to our um, health right now and we'll up this to 100. Is that 50? Yeah. Um, we'll do a, another fight and oh, we still blew him away. Um, oh, wow. Health four. Oh, I know. Okay. I, I must have put that in the wrong stat. Go back. Do, 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 do. Yeah, all right. So we're going to go to our thing right there, and we're just going to give one hundreds across the board. There we go. All right, so we didn't one hit KO him this time. Health is 21, power is 10, attack is 26, defense is 27, our value is 9. Hmm. Yeah, that seems about right, I think. Um, we can actually see a fun little graph of our health changing as we do each attack. Um, all right. I don't know if this is going to work, though, all the time, because we might want to come up with a di with a different kind of like way to um, calculate this. I'm thinking that we could do something that involves like a ratio of attack to defense and then kind of multiply that times some sort of max damage. But you would think that would scale depending on like the health. Right. I, I don't know if that quite works either. Hmm. Because th there isn't always a good max damage, you know? Hmm. I think... I don't know if you'd ever want to put an or statement that would be like, uh, they can never... You could get some variation with regards to how much damage is taken away, but the max is like half of the health or something. But... Uh, I don't know um, if we want to sort of set set a hard limit on what's the most damage that could be taken taken away, or if it's half proportionally of the damage that remains, or something, or just half, or I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. I'm gonna look at Pokemon's, um, and oh my god, this is more complicated than I ever thought it would be. Interesting. Okay, so here's how Pokemon does it. The damage is equal to 2 times the level divided by 5 plus 2 times the power of the attack times the attack over the defense, so I had at least a good thing there, divided by 50 plus 2. That is how much damage. Oh, wow. Okay, um, that... It's multiplied by a million other things because there are a bunch of different things that affect um, how uh, damage is done. For example, the number of targets, the, what the current weather is, what the badge, if you have the badge that for the type or not, because badges actually give you a boost to that type attack. Fun mm. fact. Um, if it's critical, if it's stab, a random range type, if it's burn, you do less damage, and, you know, other stuff. Mm. Dang, okay. Yeah. So, okay, I, I like at least the idea of this being like attack divided by defense. So let's let's do that ratio because I think that that's a that was a um, good kind of instinct. We're going to do this division right here, and instead we're going to put this now as our ratio. So let's just go ahead and keep printing that out, and we'll get rid of this right here. Um, so we're going to take this. Um, okay, auto stop. You see Otto is actively biting me. Oh, no. Yeah. You know what this means, Otto, right? You get kicked off. Go. Go, buddy. 
I love Otto, but he is um, often turns into a tornado of claws and biting. Oh, um, man. He's great. I have a friend with a, uh, who has a cat who uh, had shared that. Uh, yeah, I was surprised. I didn't know. Uh, I thought maybe that's more of a dog thing. Sometimes dog, dogs end up biting you. I didn't realize cats bite you, too. Oh, yeah, they do. Um, not not all cats. I think more cats are are often saner than um, Otto is. But oh, nice. Okay, so we have another ghost from Bro Skibble. This one is a cotton candy ghost. Oh, that looks delicious. That yep. And we're going to go ahead and make sure we put this guy in the game too. So let's just go ahead and do this. Put that there. And uh, we're going to do. Cotton candy, candy ghost. Nice. All right. So um, we're going to uh, now go and work on um, uh, this formula again. I need to stop getting distracted. So we're going to do this move power times this ratio, I think. Mm. Uh, and we're still going to do this max of one so that we make sure we're always doing at least one damage. Um, so we'll do the move power times um, our ratio. And we're going to go ahead and put this inside of, I'll, maybe I'll just make a, to make this easier. Oh, I think I actually have a tipped number variable already. Yeah, I do. Whenever I'm doing like inter, like calculations that I'm going to change later, I always like to create a temp, whatever type it is. Um, very well so that I don't end up with 10 million variables at the end of my um, program. Mm -hmm. um, OK, so now we're going to do a oh, whoa. Right. Do a fight right there, and we did that much. Let's see what that was. So the ratio was 0.8. The value was 8.8. .8. Um, and that looks reasonable. Let's do another one. So let's see, 8.8 .8 again. Oh, it's always going to be the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's always going to be the same thing. What am I doing? Um, so that's getting more into a good, um, uh, like, realm. Um, I think we can stick with this for now. Let's just go ahead. We're going to add in our random element. So we're going to do a pick random. And we're going to add our value. So we're going to say our value equals uh, temp number, and then we're going to say value um, plus random. And we're going to put in, we're going to change our temp number by value. So let's go to um, change, put this right here. Do you change temp number by pick random from 0 to, uh, let's see. Hmm. Yeah, we'll just do 0 to 10 so that it's always changing by a fixed amount. Um, I would prefer to change this based off of like um, the attack or something, but this will this be fine for now. Um, OK, so we'll leave it at that and now put in our print out our temp number again and return that. And there we go. OK, so let's do a fight now. See, we did half their health that time and half their health again. But let's look at what our values were. So our value plus random the first time was 16.47. Our value plus random the second time was also 16. OK, where are we? OK, value plus random is 19.6. Value plus random is 11.6. OK, yeah, we're getting a reasonable value. But our um, our damage of attack power, I think, is going to be, we want to use much less than 10 for our basic attacks. So um, let's go ahead and change this to be like, let's make a kind of good attack. We'll make it a five um, and do a fight. And yeah, so that's giving us a more reasonable value of damage, I think. Hmm. Seems hmm. like good variation. Yeah, it might be too. It might not have enough of an effect because it seems like the overwhelming thing here is the attack that's dealing it, right? So if I make this 10 again, and try, mm -hmm. then yeah, see, we're getting pretty similar to what it was when it was five. If I make this one, 
Yeah, that, that one is much less, I think. Well, mm -hmm. it, it's kind of in a range. So, yeah, so it's still like three to four hits to finish them off, which I think is the same as what it was. Is there, uh, I'm guessing uh, after figuring out the uh, mechanics behind this, um, I don't know if, I'm trying to remember what they usually do in Pokemon. Usually it's like the, the character all of a sudden, like, I don't know if it disappears off screen or it sort of gets sent in some direction. Or, um, yeah, yeah. Well, we're, we're going to add animations to all of this. I just want to get the, the core game stuff, you know, done first. Yeah, oh, th that makes sense. Yeah. Um, OK, so let's go back to our damage formula. And I want to make this, um, we're going to make this move power have more of, of an effect. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to do the, we'll say the maximum move power is 10. Um, so we're going to do the move power divided by 10, and we're going to multiply this times our ratio which is going to cut it by quite a bit. Um, and so now when we're doing an attack with one, we should do very little damage. Yep, that's about what I was hoping for. That looks good. We do an attack with 10, we should do much more damage. Yep, so that's much more. Um, yeah, good. OK, I, I think this is all right. Yeah, no, it's kind of it's kind of cool. I didn't realize to what to what extent you can sort of <clears throat> manipulate small variables and sort of get really more complicated behavior. So. Yeah, that's kind, it's kind of cool how that all kind of comes together. Yeah, a big part of making video games is tweaking all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to, it's called balancing usually. Balancing is really important, and a lot of times they don't even get it right. Um, so that's why, you know, modern games, they get a ton of patches, right? Mm -hmm. They're constantly getting fixed and things are getting tweaked. Um, but in the olden days, they couldn't do that. They just were shipping a cartridge that went to a factory, and so they um, had to get it right the first time. There's no way to update a Nintendo 64 cartridge. Um, mm -hmm. All right, OK, so we got this. Let's go ahead and make this into more of a two-sided battle. So we're going to make a um, function now, which is going to be called do opponent turn. Hmm. And we're going to make it so that our opponent can attack back. Uh, I definitely spelled that wrong. There we go. OK, so I'm going to do a diggle real quick. And let's grab out our do opponent turn and our do player turn, because um, these are the two functions we're going to be messing with right now. Um, and right now, where I'm calling this do player turn right here and here, I don't actually want to do that. I want to call do opponent turn instead so that our thing gets turned over to our opponent. Um, and then the last thing I want to do is when we do go to the next step, we want to get rid of a menu if it exists. Oh, no, we actually are doing that. So never mind. I'll go there. OK, so um, we're going to do an attack. And now let's go ahead and make it so that our opponent attacks back. So we're going to say change status bar of health attached to instead this is going to be companion. And we're going to just swatch, swap all of these between companion and opponent. Do, 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 do. Current and companion. There we go. And we're going to start printing some battle text. I think this is probably the point at which we should start like actually defining some moves. Um, so we'll do that in a second too. But for now, we're just going to call do opponent turn. And inside do opponent turn, we're going to call do player turn. So now when I do a fight, I should see both of their health go down. Yeah, OK, cool. So they destroyed us. Oh. Which is kind of expected because we made their stats way higher than our stats. All right, cool. So that's good. We have a battle that's going both ways now. 
Um, we're going to now, let's see, actually, before we start doing moves, what I want to do is um, take that opponent code that we had before, mm -hmm. um, so where we were creating all of our enemies, and make sure make it so we can actually get some random enemies that appear and that they're all kind of different. Mm. So we're going to go into our um, start battle, where we have all of these guys. And we're going to start um, creating monsters based off of um, all of these uh, like templates and giving them all different stats. So we're going to make a function which is going to be called create monster. Um, this is going to take in a number, which is just going to be called ID. Oh, whoops, I already created this. Create monster by ID. There you go. And we're just going to swap. We're going to go through all of our ID numbers and um, create whichever monster corresponds to the ID that we have. Oh, and we're also going to edit this function and put in um, a level. So um, we're going to just assign all of these monsters that we have um, random ID numbers. So I'm just going to put them all in order. And let's just create a bunch of branches on this. There we go. And I don't want to have just a pure else because um, I want to make sure that we are always uh, giving numbers to everything and we don't just have one that just is, you know, whatever's left behind. Um, okay, so let's do ID equals zero, ID equals one, ID equals two, three, four. And we're going to pass in our level for all of the level parameters. Okay, so how do we define stats for all of these guys? Well, I think the easiest way to do this, the safest way to do this, is to uh, assume some kind of balance. What we're going to do is see, um, we're going to give them all the same total number. Mm -hmm. So all of these four numbers that we have that define the power of our monster, we're just going to make sure that it always adds up to the same number, and we should get some that are kind of balanced in some way or another. We probably have some stats that are way better than other stats that we haven't figured out yet. Um, we aren't even using speed, so speed's completely useless. Mm. But um, yeah, so um, I guess Lucas, pick a number between two hundred and six hundred. Uh, four seventy. Four seventy. Okay, we're gonna make sure it always adds up to four seventy. Um, so. Let's go ahead and say uh, base stats should add up to 470. And so we're going to start um, doing just kind of randomly based off these guys. Um, so possessed frog, I'm going to give them a low HP. I'm going to give them a high attack. I'm going to give them, okay, so we're at 170 so far. So we have 200 left. So I could just leave this. You know, what, I'm just going to leave this as 100, 100. Hmm. All right, so for this next guy, Crying Ghost, I'm going to give them 120. We're going to make this uh, 50. We're going to make this 170, and that puts us at 170, 340. So this would be 130. See, that's 300, 420, 470. Good. OK. Wait, that means I must have messed this one up. Yeah, sorry. This needs to be like 200. There we go. Um, okay, so this guy, I'm going to give him 200 attack. I'm going to make this uh, one, 100 is fine. We'll make this one 50, and then this one would be, let's see, so that's 350, so this would be 120. Um, this guy's going to have a bad final one because we've been getting everyone good on that. <laughs> um, make this 190, 240. 290, 390. So we want to make this like, uh, I'm so I'm doing quick math and struggling. 130. That's what we want this to be. What if you did the one that was like 400 for one and then put like 20, 20, 
30. <laughs> oh, I think they'll just get, they'll either, it depends on what stat we put it in, but <laughs> that'll be like, as long as we're doing it for health, that's probably fine. So we, let's, let's do, um, for cotton candy ghosts, we will give them 350 um, for their health, and then we'll do 40, 40, 40, and that, that might make them super OP. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> um uh okay yeah and so now if we ever want to edit one of our monsters we just come to this one function to do it for all of them and we can kind of make sure that we're um getting everything up to the uh uh same amount okay so q Phoenix says make bob bobs box bob's health and damage really high so i think box bob let's see so i want to make this this is health, so I'll put this one as 190 and swap it with this one, just 130. Um, I think this one is attack, it's hads, so we'll make this 130, this one 100. There you go. So 190 health, 130 attack. Okay. So now that we're creating monsters, let's go to um, where we are starting our battle, and we're going to instead call this function. So let me get rid of this. Oh, we're going to put our opponent right here. Um, oh, and you know what? I need to, um, so right now I'm setting a variable for all this. Instead, I'm going to call return on all of these. Hmm. Um, and we're going to be returning our monster. So just do that. And we're going to drag a bunch of these out. Now it's angry because I'm not always returning something. I'll fix you in a second, game. So I am going to have to put something in this house. But we'll figure out what to do in a sec. OK, so put that in there. That I realized there. when I built a few, uh, did a few tutorials over the weekend, I was like, OK, this is, uh, this is really practical to do three times a week because this is like a good skill to I don't know. <laughs> like it makes sense to also get in get in the reps once I sort of was through my second one and I was like, oh okay, this is how the blocks are working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean that was part of the reason why we like why we do these streams is so that we have um, you know, more experience with this. Hi, Asan. Hello. I saw you as soon as I came in, but I was waiting for a, a conversation. Um Okay, so we're gonna make a missing no, which is a fun little nod to Pokemon, and make sure we're always returning something right here. Do you guys know what missing no is? Oh man, I can't think of it. Was it a was it a Pokemon that that was it a? Or well, I, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. It's on to you. Yeah, it was a. Uh, it was like a either like a Pokemon that was removed from the game or like one that like it's it's some kind of bug. Like when it shows up, it's like this weird shape. It doesn't really have a number like all the other Pokemon do in the Pokédex. Uh, I don't remember what else it did or how you got it, but yeah. So it, did it corrupt your game forever? If you. It was, yeah, it, it was a, um, why is this angry? Why are you angry? I'm just going to refresh. Oh, don't blur the panda. Aw. Uh, Ye, panda cup. It's not, a, it's not a panda. Or, sorry, not a panda, it's a bear. <laughs> well, it's, it's not a panda because this is chive. I just had milk in here. Or not. No, actually, no. Uh, no, I can never get a panda. Yeah, that's unfortunate. It has to be either a brown bear or a polar bear. <laughs> that's unfortunate. <sighs> Ooh, okay, we messed something up because we no longer have an, a status bar over here. Oh, no. Uh, okay. Let's go on with it. <laughs> hey, I thought I got a quarter if I showed up in the last five minutes, not the last ten minutes. Yeah, that's, that's true. Hassan does not get a quarter this time, technically. Hey. Um, yeah, yeah, so Missing No was a memory corruption that happened in the game. Every Pokemon had an ID number, and the hmm. Missing No refers to a Pokemon where the number is missing um, from the Pokedex, basically. And oh. you could get it by doing a bunch of random stuff. Um, it, it, it involved some, uh, 
uh, like going to a certain location. You had to eventually end up, I remember, on Cinnabar Island, and then you would surf up and down the right side of Cinnabar Island and cap until you encounter a Pokemon. And you get these Pokemon called Missing No. They had super glitched out um, uh, like stats, which was a bit of a um, uh, fun thing to mess with. And Hassan was right. Sometimes if you catch caught one, it would just ruin your save file. It was always a, a bad idea. And just weird stuff would happen when you have one. Like you would turn into a tree and walk around and you would be a tree or like <laughs> anything like that. Um, yeah, missing no fun times. Um, we definitely thought that we had discovered some weird, amazing, you know, uh, secret when we went through this. But it was it was not a secret. It was just a glitch in the game. Dang. Um, all right. So, okay, we need to figure out a few things. One, we need to figure out why I don't have a status bar. Um, so let's go to our create monster function. Where is that? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. All right, we're going to do a Daryl. Let's see, create monster heroes. All right, so we are creating a status bar. We're setting the Z depth to 125. We're attaching it to our sprite, temp sprite. Then we're calling level up, and then we are returning our temp sprite. And I am calling this function when I'm creating my companion inside of onstart. All right, so I'm setting him right there, setting the left and bottom. Oh, and I'm setting it to be invisible. Oh, that's, that must be what I messed up. Um, so we're going to go over to our start battle again. Where are you at, start battle? There we go. And let's see, companion set invisible off. Set status bar of kind health attached to companion invisible on. That should be off. So that's what I did. Let's see, Bro Skibble says that we, uh, the um, pumpkin ghost blends in with the backgrounds. Yeah, that's a little unfortunate. Let's go ahead and change some colors around. Um, so we're going to go to our create monster by ID over here. We're going to go to our pumpkin ghost. And we're going to switch colors. So a fun way to switch colors is if you select it as your background, and then you select a new color. In this case, I'm going to do Brown, and then you do Shift R, you will do a replace in the pixel editor. So there we go. Ooh, okay, cool. And we have some more art. So let's we go ahead and have um, two more from Broskable. Thank you very much. Let me go ahead and send these over to my stream computer, and I will get them in the game. All right. So first up, we have a shark. <laughs> Take a look. Uh, oh, bro, bro Skibble, it does not like the, the new brown coat of paint on the pumpkin coast. <laughs> oh, my God. I love the tongue coming out of this guy. Um, all right. If, what, what, what would you rather I do, Bro Skibble? All right, got one more. Genie Ghost, wonderful. Kiwi Phoenix, did you have a ghost? I already got one of Kiwi Phoenixes in the game. Oh, Vortex Ghost. All right, so this one is a Genie Ghost. You have the Vortex Ghost. I'll post it in the teams all right let me let me fix the pumpkin ghost yep it's not this one yep it's not this one yep it's not this one wait which one is it i had it open in tab at some point okay all right kiwi phoenix i've shared your ghost thank you uh 
Hassan, can you give me the pumpkin ghost again? I somehow have lost the link to it. Uh, sure, I'll look in the chat. Uh, can I look? Can I search in this chat? I'm gonna make this guy teal and change the eye bits to dark purple. Yeah, so we don't have the same problem. This is going to be genie ghost. Oh, I found pumpkin ghost. Okay, I'll post it. Ghost here and put in our vortex ghost. Oh, so pumpkin ghost is a fun portmanteau. All right, I've officially made my first uh, Twitch login. Hey. <laughs> hey, we got another hey, Lucas over gotta, here. Gotta turn you into a mod. Um, okay, let me grab the pumpkin ghost. Oh, is the bot up there? I uh, know Joey. Joey's. Oh no. We're doing a release, so. Oh yes, this is true. Do 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 paste. Um, all right, so we're gonna come back on Wednesday again. again. The bot will be up and running now, and we're gonna make the upper part of the eye <sighs> dark purple. So that we keep that. There we go. Okay. Um. <laughs> all right. So I think we have all of the ghosts in now. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we got them all. Um, and we are out of time. So thank you guys for tuning in. We've got the basics of our battle starting. Um, we're going to finish up the battle next time. So we're probably going to be doing some animations and you know, having text print out and stuff. Um, so tune in. Um, and then we'll kind of just work into, um, like, I don't know, catching ghosts, probably. And uh, after that, who knows? Maybe we will do evolutions or something like that. We've, we've got, you know, Pokemon has a ton of stuff for us to do. But we're going to be kind of, you know, sticking with that genre. Um, yeah. so anyway, I am Richard at Richard on the Make Code Forum. Am I still second? I'm Hassan at Hassan on the Make Code Forum? Yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who comes up with a name that starts before mine? <laughs> I'm Lucas, the intern, the second Lucas. <laughs> um, and we will see you guys on Friday. We are not streaming on Wednesday. Don't turn up because we have a team event that's going on. So I, I won't be here to run the stream. So, um, you know, don't tune in on Wednesday. We won't be here. But we will be on Friday and next week. Yes. Um, so see you guys later. Bye.